Welcome to this predicted paper from OnMaths. This paper represents the best guess for the upcoming exams. Please use this paper in addition to your other revision. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMaths is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions, and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing. Enjoy! So we can draw out our place value grid to help us out with this question. We've got thousands, hundreds, tens and units. So we'll need uh, another one there. So thousands go here, hundreds here, tens here and then units here. So this says 2000. So a 2 will go in the thousands column. 30, so that'll be a 3 there, and 2. So we need to fill in a zero here to keep that two as 2,000, otherwise that would collapse and it'd become 232. So the answer is 2032. So if we do our place value grid, and so we've got uh, units here, tenths and hundredths. Don't think we need any more. So we can put in our number, is it five point eight seven and you can see here that the eight here is in the tenths column so the eight represents eight tenths so this person's at Ashkug at uh, 2017 um, so they're going to have missed this train here and they're going to have missed this train here so those those are off but they will be in time for this train here and we're looking for the uh, time it hits rise down so it will get to flute at 2052 and then rise down will be at 2124 when we simplify a fraction we want to try and make the numbers at the top and the bottom as small as we can so looking at the numbers 24 and 60, we need to think, is there a number we can divide both numbers by? Well, they're both even numbers, so we can divide them both by 2. And that will get us 12 over 30. These are also both even numbers, so we can again divide by 2. And that will give us 6 over 15. Now 6 and 15 are both in the 3 times table, so we can divide them both by 3 and we get the answer of 2 over 5. Now 2 and 5, there's no numbers that go into 2 or uh, two and 5. And so that is our answer. Now, we could have gone straight from the question to the answer by dividing by 12. And some of you may notice that 24 and 60 are both in the 12 times table, so you could have gone straight there, but it makes absolutely no difference if you divide by 2, divide by 2, then divide by 3, or you could have divided by 2, then divided by 6, or done it in any of those orders. For this question, it's really important that we understand what the words sum and product mean. Now, sum just means add, and product just means times. So we're going to start by adding the 5 and the 4, so that will equal 9. And then what we're going to do is find the product of 9 and 7. So we're going to multiply them together. 9 times 7, which is 63. So our answer is 63. To answer this question, we're going to have to remember what bid mass or bod mass is. And it stands for brackets, indices, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. Okay, if you do bid mass, obviously bod mass is slightly different. And here we've got no brackets, we've got no indices, so those don't really apply. We don't have a division, but we do have a multiplication, so we must do that first. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do 8 times 6. 8 times 6 is 48. And we've not got any multiplications anymore, and then we've got an addition. So 11 plus 48 is 59, and that's our answer. Now you wouldn't get the same answer if you did the 11 plus 8 first. That would give you 19, and then 19 times 6 is definitely not 59. So we need to first of all understand what a cube number is. 
So cube number is the answer to when you get three integers or whole numbers and we multiply them by themselves three times. So one times one times one is one, two times two times two is eight, three times three times three is 27, four times four times four is 64, and five times five times five is 125. So 1, 8, 27, 64, 125 are all cube numbers, and it goes on forever. And this question's asked us to find all the odd, or an odd, cube number that is smaller than 100. So it has to be odd, so that gets rid of the 8 and the 64, and it has to be smaller than 100, so that gets rid of the 125. So I can either write down um, 1, would be a fine answer, or 27. I'm going to go for 1. Whenever we multiply two negatives, we always get a positive, so we know our answer will be positive. We're going to do 9 times 12, which is going to be 108, and v times v, which is going to be v squared. So a prime number is a number that is only in the 1 times table and its own times table. So 4, for example, is not a prime number because it is also in the 2 times table. 6 is in the 2 times table. 15 is in the 3 times table. 21 is also in the 3 times table. 9 is also in the 3 times table. Now, 1 is a bit of a special case. The definition is that it has to be in 1 and its own times table. And technically, 1 is only in one of those. So 1 is not a prime number. The smallest prime number is actually 2, but 2 is not in this list. 23, though, is not in any other times table. So 23 is a prime number. Multiples are times tables. So the multiples of 2 are the times table of 2. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc., etc. So the only number in this list that is in the 2 times table is the 6. So we can write the factors of 6 by working out two numbers that multiply together to make 6. So 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. So 1, 2, 3 and 6 are all the factors of 6. The only number that is in our list is the 2. So we've got 10x plus 2x. Now 10x plus 2x are like terms. So we can just add them together to make 12x, and we've got that equal to 24. Let's put in our solve lines. Now that 12 before the x is a times 12, so to get rid of it we do the opposite, which is divide both sides by 12. And so we've got x on the left hand side, and 24 divided by 12, which is 2. So our answer is x equals 2. So football is represented as a quarter of this pie chart. And so if there are 60 students all together, we just do 60 divided by four to find a quarter of it, and that's 15. So there are 15 people who picked football. I'm gonna start just by writing down the number. And we're asked to round this to three significant figures. And that basically what that means is starting from the left-hand side, it's three numbers that we want. So one, two, three. And we're going to do our line on after that third number. And you start counting the first non-zero digits. So the first digit there was two, so we started counting. Now all the numbers to the left, or sorry, to the right, so these numbers here, will all turn to zero. But before that happens, we look at this number. Now this number, if it's five or more, it moves this number up by one. If it's less than 5, that number stays the same. Now it is 5 or more, because it is 5. So it's not going to be 207, it's going to be 208. Now, a common mistake is that students write down 208. No. All the numbers to the right of that line turn to 0. So it would be 0, 0, 0. So it would be 20, 000, or 208,000 exactly. So we're just going to start by writing the number a little bit bigger. So it says to two decimal places, so we're going to draw a line after the second decimal place. Now all the numbers to the right are going to disappear, they're going to turn to zero, and because it's a decimal that just means we get rid of them. 
but we have to look at this number first. Now, if this number is less than 5, we just keep the number to the left, so 8.17. But if it's 5 or more, then this 7 goes up to an 8. So this will be 8.18. For this question, we're going to have to remember bid mass or bod mass. So we're going to first of all look and see if we've got any brackets. Well, we do. We've got the uh, 11 squared minus 21 in brackets. So we're going to be looking at that bit first. Um, inside the brackets, though, we don't have any brackets. Um, but we do have an indice. We've got that 11 squared. So we're going to deal with that first. So 11 squared is 121. So we've got rid of the indice. But we're still looking at the bracket. So we're going to do 121 minus 21, which is going to be 100. Now we have no more brackets, no more divisions, but we do have a multiplication. So it's going to be 300, and that's our answer. The first thing we need to work out is the fraction that Sarah will receive. Well, if Jane receives 9 over 10, then that just leaves how much of the numerator to match the denominator. So 9 plus 1 is 10, so it leaves 1 tenth left for Sarah to have. And the reason that works is that the total amount needs to add up to 1, and 9 over 10 plus 1 over 10 is 10 over 10, which is just 1. So next we need to find out what 1 tenth of 60 is. So we know that we divide by the bottom and times by the top. So 60 divided by 10 is 6. And then 6 times 1 is just still 6. So our answer will be £6. So we're going to use a function machine to find out the output when we've got an input of 11. So we put 11 into this machine. And the first thing that happens is we multiply it by 3. So out of that first machine, we're going to have 33, which is 11 times 3. Then the next part of the machine is going to take away 5 from that. So 33 take away 5 is going to be 28. So our output is going to be 28. In this question, we're given the output as 53. So we know that the output was 53. So now we've kind of got to work backwards. And when we work backwards through a function machine or a number machine, we do the opposite of what it says. So this first one says plus 9. But when we go backwards, we do the opposite which is take away 9. So we do 53 take away 9, which is 44. Now we can check that by going the other way. So 44 plus 9 is 53, so that works. The next one says times 4, so the opposite would be divided by 4. So we're going to do 44 divided by 4, and that gives us an input of 11. Now let's check the whole thing. We put in 11. 11 times 4 is 44, 44 plus 9 is 53, so we know we've got it correct. So for shop A, they're selling the rulers in um, lots of 3, and so we just need to get our 60 and divide it by 3 to figure out how many lots of 3 we have, so we've got 20. So if one uh, bundle of rulers costs £1.50, then 20 times £1.50 would be £30. So in total it would cost £30 at shop A. I'm going to do the same for shop B. Their bundles are 5 rulers, so we're going to do 60 divided by 5, which is 12. So we're going to buy 12 bundles at £2 each, and that will be £24. So the cheapest price is at shop B at £24. So we're going to start off by working out what 100% of 120 is. Well, that's obviously just going to be 120. And we're trying to get to 6%. So we always start off by working out 10%. It's always normally useful. And we just divide that 120 by 10. So we get 12. And we try to get 6%. So it would be nice if I knew 5%. And 5% is nice and easy because we just halve that 10%. So that would be 6. And if we got the 1% as well, we can get to the 6%. So to find out what 1% is, we just divide the 10% by 10 and get 1.2. So to get the 6%, we're going to add the 5 
8% and the 1%. So we're going to add the 6 and the 1.2. And so we just do 6 plus 1.2, which is just going to be 7.2. And that's our answer. The key says that a circle represents 8 DVDs. And if we cut it up, then each quarter represents 2. So Monday had 8 and 2 and 2, which is 12. Tuesday had 8 and 8, which was 16. Wednesday had 8, 2, 2, 2, which is 14. And Thursday had 8, 8 and a quarter, which is 2, which is 18. But with a pictogram, you can actually just look to see which has the most of the shape. So if you look at Thursday, it has 2 and a quarter. Well, that's more than any of the other ones. All the other ones have 2 or less. So it's definitely going to be Thursday. It's really important when answering this question that we're really methodical. So we're going to start off just looking at steak. And I'm, so I'm going to start off with the S. And we're going to pair it with the first dessert, which is the I. Then we're going to pair the steak with the second dessert, which is the mousse. Then we're going to pair it with the third dessert, which is the fruit. So we're being really methodical. We've done all of the combinations with steak. And so we're going to look at burger next. And we're going to pair it with the first ice cream. Then burger. And we're going to pair it with the mousse. And then finally the burger we're going to pair with the fruit. As long as we do things methodically, we don't ever miss any. So the first thing we're going to do is write this as a ratio between the fractions. So we're going to have um, green to black. Now it says that um, a quarter of the counters are black. And therefore the remaining counters will be green. So if a quarter are black, that leaves three quarters to be green. And what we can do here is, on both sides of the ratio, all I'm going to do is just times it by 4. So I'm just going to times 4 both sides. So 3 divided by 4 times 4, because over 4 just means divided by 4. So 3 divided by 4 times by 4 just gets rid of the fraction. And 1 divided by 4 times 4 is just going to be 1. Now, this might surprise some people, because they will probably think it's a ratio of 4 to 1. But we can show here that it's a ratio of 3 to 1. So we've got to first of all find out what the gradient is for our graph. So we're just going to pick two points and draw a triangle between them. So I'm just going to pick this point here and this point here. And there's no reason I pick those. I just pick those at random. And we look at how far it's going to cross. So it's gone across 10. And how far it's gone up. So it's gone from 24 to 36. So it's gone 12 up. And to work out the gradient, which you can call m, or you can just write out the word gradient, it's change in y over change in x. So how much has y changed over how much has x changed? So y is this one here, so it's changed by 12, and x has changed by 10. So it's 12 divided by 10, which is 1.2. Now a gradient represents the amount of change in the y per one change in the x. So for every one mile we travel, we're going to go up. It's going to cost 1.2 more. So the interpretation that we give for this context, because this is about taxis, is that the taxi will cost one pound twenty or one hundred and twenty pence per one unit on the x per mile, and that's true for the gradient for any context. It's for every one of this, how much of this increases, how much the y increases by. So a hundred percent of one hundred and twenty is one hundred and twenty, and let's put that in a bubble. So we're going to split that bubble up to find out what 10% is. And to find 10%, all we need to do is divide it by 10. 
So divide at 120 by 10, you get 12. And then we want to split that bubble up again into 5%. And 5% is found just by halving it again. And so that would be, or just halving it, so that would be half of 12, which is 6. We could do with 1% um, as well. And we're trying to get to 26%, so we do 1%, so dividing the 10% by 10 again, 1.2. And we could do with 20%, and 20% just means we're going to double the 10%. So double 12 will be 24. So to work out 26%, we need to add these together to get to 26. So we're going to add these numbers here together. Okay, so we've got a 6, a 1.2, and a 24. And we're adding them together. And that would be 11, so carry the 1, and that would be 3. Now, it says to decrease it by 26%. So 26% is 31.2, so we need to subtract that. So we're going to do 120, take away 31.2. So I need to borrow one from the 2 to make that a 10, borrow one there to make that a 10, and that will be a 9. So 10 take away 2 is 8, 9 take away 1 is 8. And there's a 1 here, so we need to borrow that 1. That's 11 take away 3, which is 8. So our answer is 88.8. .8. So water to orange is 3 to 2. Ooh. We've got water here and we've got orange squash here. And we're told that um, we've got 80 uh, centilitres of orange. So we've got 80 here. And we're asked to find the amount of water required. So what we do is we figure out how to get from 2 to 80. Well, we're going to times by 40. If I times that side of the ratio by 40, I've got to times the left-hand side by 40 as well. 3 times 40 is 120. So I'm going to need 120 centilitres of water. To draw this graph, we need to find three coordinates, and plot them, and then draw the graph. So we're going to pick x equals minus 2, x equals 0, and x equals 2. So I'm going to start with x equals minus 2, and I'm just going to look at the equation here and substitute in the minus 2. So y equals 2 times minus 2, take away 6. So 2 times minus 2 is minus 4, and minus 4 take away 6 is minus 10. So let's plot that, minus 2, minus 10 would be down here. Next one I'm going to do is x equals 0. So we've got y equals 2 times 0, take away 6. 2 times 0 is just 0, so 0 take away 6. It's just going to be minus 6. So 0 is going to be minus 6. And finally we've got x equals 2. 2 times 2 take away 6. It's going to be 4 take away 6. And that's going to be minus 2. So 2 is going to be at minus 2. Now you need to make sure that you draw the full graph in and not just the graph between the points. So make sure it continues all the way to where the graph finishes. And there we go. So if we look at the graph, this point here is by well, it's the biggest. This one comes close, but it's not the biggest. So the biggest would be this one. And if we draw a line down from there, now we might think that it's enough to say Q4, but actually there's two Q4s here, so we must state the year as well. So Q4 in the year 2000. To answer this question, we need to cut this shape into two shapes. So we're going to draw a line across here, and we're going to cut it into a rectangle and a triangle. Now we need to first of all label the um, parts of the triangle. So the length or the width of the triangle, the base, will be the same as the base at the bottom, so that will be 20 centimeters. And we need to find the height, which is 
this length here, which is 90, degree, 90 degrees to the base. And to find that, what, what we can look at is the fact that the total height of the whole thing is 13. And the bit, uh, the height of the bit we don't want is 11. So what's left over? Well, 2 centimeters will be left over. So the height will be 2 centimeters of the triangle. So let's work out the area of the triangle first. Which is going to be half times base times height, half times the base which is 20, times the height which is 2, will just give us 20. Now let's work out the area of the rectangle. And that's just going to be the width times the length. Width is 20. The length is 11, so that would be 220. Then to work out the total area of the whole thing, we're just going to do, add those together. So 220 plus 20, which is 240. The units are all in centimetres, and so the area units will be centimetres squared. So we can see that the first four of these have already been plotted. Now it's really important that you um, pick the, or you do the coordinate the right way around. So the first one is number and then algebra. So we're looking at this coordinate here, we're 18 on number, which would be here, and then 14 on algebra, which would be this point here. 12 on both, so 12 and 12 would be here. And then 21 and 17, so 21 and 17 would be roughly there. So whenever we have a scatter graph, chances are we'll be drawing a line of best fit. And so that's what we'll start off with, draw a line of best fit in. And it says we're looking for a height of the box or an estimate of the height of the box with the width of 17. So 17 is here. So the width of 17 will be a line across. Let's try and get this just right. Line across there. And what we do is we draw a line down when it hits the line of best fit. Now looking at the scale here, this seems to be going up in twos. And so this line here would be at three. The experimental probability is the successful outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. So we're looking for the probability that it's white. So it's going to be 25 over, and we're just going to do 35 plus 25 plus 31, which is 91. And that's our probability, 25 over 91. Be careful when, when it say total, you must include all of the outcomes, so red, white, and other. I'm going to write the expression given to us, but with times signs in. So it's 2 times x plus 15 times y and it says that x is minus 3 and y is 4 so instead of x we're going to replace it with a minus 3 and I'm just going to put it into brackets just to make things a bit easier and instead of y we're going to write a 4 so here we've got 2 times minus 3 a positive times a negative is a negative and 2 times 3 is 6 plus and we've got 15 times 4 which is going to be 60 so we've got minus 6 plus 60. A different way of doing that is 60 minus 6 gives you the same answer, which is going to be 54. So we've got to first of all work out how many parts there are all together. So we're told that the ratio of red, yellow and green is 3 to 2 to 4. So to work out how many parts there are all, all together, we do 3 plus 2 plus 4, which is 9 parts. So there's 9 equal piles of sweets. Okay. But to work out what one part or one pile of sweets is worth, we're going to get the 99 sweets and divide it by the amount of piles. And that's going to be 11. So one part is worth 11 sweets. We're asked to find out how many yellow sweets. And yellow is the middle one. So it's going to be the two. So yellow has two piles of 11 sweets. 2 times 11 is going to be 22, so it's going to be 22 sweets. 
all probabilities have to add up to one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take away these probabilities away from one. So I'm going to do one take away 0 0.09 plus 0 0.13 plus 0 0.18. And so that's going to be 0 0.4. One takeaway 0.4 is 0.6. I'm going to start by working out what the building is, or the width of the building is, in centimetres. So it says 33 metres, and I'm going to convert that into centimetres by times it by 100. Okay, now when it says it has a scale of 1 to 300, it means 300 in real life is 1 on our map. So all I need to do is divide it by 300 to find out what it's going to be on our map. So we just divide that by 300 and I get the answer of 11. So it's going to be 11 centimetres on our map. So what we do is we notice that um, to get this 10, we add the 3 and the 7. To get this 17, we add the 7 and the 10. And to get this 27, we add the 10 and the 17. Whenever we have this kind of sequence, it's called a Fibonacci sequence. You essentially add the previous two terms to get to the next term. And so what we need to do is just simply add the 17 and the 27. When you do that, you get 44. So our next term is 44. So we're going to track the amount of eggs needed to make certain amount of cupcakes. So we're given in the question that it's six cupcakes requires four eggs. And what we're going to do is we're just going to work out how many eggs is required for one cupcake. So we're going to divide both sides by six. And that's for one cupcake will be two thirds of an egg. And we're looking to make 18 cupcakes. So I'm going to times that by 18 on both sides. So for 18 cupcakes, 2 thirds times 18 is going to be 12 eggs. So we're going to require 12 eggs. Something else we could have done to go straight there is just times the amount of cupcakes by 3 and times the amount of eggs by 3. So when simplifying ratio, it's very similar to uh, simplifying fractions, but instead of the same thing having or having to do the same thing to the top and bottom, you have to do the same thing to the left and right. So I'm going to start here by dividing both sides by 100. So I notice they both have two zeros at the end. So that will give me 10 here and 34 here. Now, these are both even numbers. So a nice easy next one to do is dividing by 2. And we get, um, was it 17? And 5 and 17, well, they're both prime numbers. And so there's nothing we can cancel them by. So it's going to be our answer, 5 to 17. So you do need to know the parts of a circle. So the full distance around the circle is called the circumference. If you've got a little bit of it, it's an arc. If you've got a line across it, that would be a chord. And the part that that's kind of trapped in there is called a segment. Um, then if you've got a line across um, the circle going through the center, that's a diameter. If you've got a line just going to the center, oh, if I can draw it properly, uh, then that's called a radius. If you've got a line that touches the circle just on one point like that, that's a tangent. But in this case, we have a sector. These fractions have different denominators, so we need to make sure they're the same before we can add these fractions. So we've got 15 and we've got 10. So what we can do is just quickly write out the 15 and the 10 times table. And we don't have to go very far before we realize that 30 is in both of them. So we need to get the bottoms of these fractions to 30. So for 2 over 15, all we do is we times top and bottom by 2 to get to 30. So it becomes 4 over 30. And for 3 over 10, we just times top and bottom by 3 should make 9 over 30. So we can rewrite this question as 4 over 30 plus 9 over 30. 
When the bottoms of the fractions, the denominators, are the same, we just add the tops, we add the numerators. So that would be 13 over 30. Can we simplify it? Well, 13 is a prime number and 13 doesn't go into 30. So our answer is 13 over 30. We're going to first of all have to convert these both into the same unit. So we've got minutes and hours. That's not going to help us much. So what I'm going to do is pick the smaller unit, which will be minutes. So I'm going to keep that um, 50 minutes. And I'm going to convert 3 hours into minutes. So that would be 180 because we times by 60. And I'm going to just remove the minutes now. And I can first of all divide by 10. And we want to try and make it nice and simple for ourselves. So divide by 10 would be 5 to 18. And we look at it, um, 5 and 18, actually there's nothing further we can do with that. So the ratio would be 5 to 18. So when asked to describe a relationship, um, I always start off the sentence as the amount of, and I pick this one here, the X one, red sweets increase. The amount of, and then I pick this one here, green sweets. And this is the only word here that changes. So what we do is we look at what happens as we're going to the right, as red sweets increase, what's happening to the green sweets. Well, the green sweets start really high, and then slowly are going down and down. So the word here is decrease. Obviously the other option is that they increase and increase would be if they ended up making this kind of correlation here. So I'm going to write the equation out, the formula out. I'm asked to make y the subject, so I'm just going to get my lines in. And so what's stopping us from having y on its own? Well, this minus 1, how am I going to get rid of it? Add 1 both sides. So we've got x plus 1 equals 9y. What else do we have that stops y from being on its own? Well, this times 9 here. So we're going to do the opposite, the inverse, which is divide by 9 both sides. And to do that nicely, what we do is we just do it as a fraction. x plus 1 over 9 equals y. So therefore y is x plus 1 over 9. The key to estimating is that normally you will be rounding numbers to one significant figure and then working out the answer. So I'm just going to rewrite this fraction here. But instead of 93, we're going to round that to one significant figure. So that will be 90. We're going to round the 265 to one significant figure. Now, some people will write 270. But one significant figure means the line goes after the 2, and so that would round to 300. Then 31 will round to 30, and 97 will round to 100. Now the next step is to see things that we can cancel here. So um, we can divide top and bottom by 10 to make that a 9 and make that a 3. We can divide top and bottom by 100, make that a 3 make that um, 1, and we can divide top and bottom by 3, so that will make that 1, and that will make that 1, and so at the top we've got 9 times 1, which is 9, and at the bottom we've got 1 times 1, so 9 divided by 1 is just 9, so our answer will be 9. So factorise means to put it into a bracket, and it looks like it's a quadratic here, um, but it's actually just a linear factorising um, because we don't have a number term. So we're going to just use one bracket for this. And looking at these terms, I'm going to focus first on the numbers. So 20 and 30, I can divide both of those by 10. And that will leave uh, 2 and 3. So that's the numbers done. Next, I'm looking at the t terms. We've got t squared there and a t there. So we can divide out a t, but that will leave a t on the first term. And finally, I'm going to look at the u. And there's just a u on both of them. I can 
factorize out and actually that just leaves nothing on the inside of the bracket now always when you do this expand the bracket to check if you've made any mistakes so I'm going to do smiles and rainbows there's loads of different methods so 10 times 2 is 20 t times t is t squared and then the u plus 10 times 3 is 30 times t times u so we know we've got the right answer so our answer is 10 t u brackets 2 t plus 3 I'm going to start by just labelling the missing angles on each of the triangles. So we've got a missing angle here, which is 40, because we're going to take away 105 and 35 from 180. And we've got a missing angle here, which is 35 degrees. Again, taking away 105 and 40 from 180. So the tempting answer is to say that G is 2 metres, because they're both at the bottom of the shape. But have a look at where 2 metres is, and have a look at where G is. G is between 35 degrees and 105 degrees. It's the length between those two angles. Well, the 2 metres is between the 105 degrees, but the 2 metres is between the 40 degrees and the 105 degrees. So if we look at this left-hand triangle and see where the 35 degrees is, it's up here. So actually the corresponding lengths of this one and this one. And because they're congruent triangles, we know that the lengths are going to be the same. To find the probability that this person was wearing a red item, we need to work out the amount of red in total and the total amount of people. So the success is red, so we're looking at red. So 7 plus the 4 which is 11, and the total amount is the 10 plus the 7 plus the 4 plus the 2. So we're going to add all those together and make 23. So our answer is 11 over 23. We have our everything list here. Now these are all the numbers that go going to our Venn diagram. And in A is all the square numbers. So we're going to have a look and see which square numbers we've got. Well, we've got 1 and we've got 4 and we've got 9 and we've got 16 are all square numbers so in here is 1, 4, 9 and 16 and we're going to look at all the odd numbers so we've got 3 we've got 17 we've got 1 and we've got 9 now in both the lists, we've got the 1 and 9, so that's going to go in the middle. Um, just the square numbers are 4 and 16, and just the odd numbers are 3 and 17. Now notice we've got the 2 and the 6 there, and those will just be on the outside. It's important to remember our speed-distance time triangle. So we've got speed equals distance over time. And here we are given a distance because from here we're 16 kilometers away from home. So the distance, let's just draw another triangle, the distance will be um, 16. And we're told that the speed is 32 kilometers per hour. So the speed is 32. So to find the time, we're going to do 16 divided by 32. So the time is a half an hour, and half an hour would bring us, if we start here, half an hour would bring us to 2030, because it's 8 o'clock where we start, and we end, therefore, half an hour later. When translating, we translate with vectors, and the top number in a vector tells us how far right, and the bottom number tells us how far up we go. And to translate a shape, you always pick a point. Now I always pick the top leftmost point, so I'm going to pick this one. And looking at the vector, it says we're going to go two to the right. So we do two jumps to the right, one, two. Now looking at the bottom, because it's minus four, instead of going up four, we're going to go down four. So it would be one, two, three, four. So our new coordinate for the top will be here. And the next thing we need to do is draw in the shape. So that's the top left 
part of the shape and so I'm going to draw in the shape and it's four across so it should go here and draw in the shape in there. Make sure that you know that that uh, coordinate is the top left part of our shape and it says to label it B. So you can see here that the triangle has changed size so the transformation we're looking at is an enlargement and we need to find out how much it's changed by so what the scale factor is and so we've got two at the bottom here of triangle A and we've got four at the bottom here of triangle B and so we are going to times the 2 by 2 to get to 4, so the scale factor is going to be 2. And last thing we need is the center of enlargement. And to do this, we're just going to connect all of the um, vertices, all the corners of the triangle, with straight lines. And get it as precise as possible. And we've got the bottom bottom left corners as well and these are just going to be straight lines aren't they and we've got the bottom right ones as well which will just be a straight line going the other way if I get it perfect there we go and so where's the point they all cross well they all cross at this coordinate here and that is going to be our center enlargement so the center enlargement is going to be at three minus 4. Whenever we do these kind of questions it's always best to convert the pattern into numbers. So we're just going to count the dots. So we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 9 in the first one. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So our sequence is going 9, 13, 17, and we're going to see what it's going up in. So we're adding 4 each time. And that means our sequence will involve 4n. And then what we do is we go backwards 1 to find the 0th term. So we're going to take away 1. So 9 take away 1 is 5. So the 0th term is 5. And the 0th term just tells us what to add on to the 4n. So 4n plus 5 will be our answer. Integer just means whole number. So we're looking for all the whole numbers that satisfy these two inequalities. Well, the first inequality says that it has to be greater than 3. So the smallest number that is greater than 3 is 4. The second uh, inequality says it has to be less than or equal to 8. So I'm just going to keep going until I get to a number that is less than or equal to 8. It can't be 9 because 9 is not less than or equal to 8. So our answer is 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. When finding a sample of people you want everyone in the population to have an equal chance of being picked. So in method um, 1, um, the fact in a lifestyle magazine might bias the um, people reading it because there's groups of people that don't read lifestyle magazines. Um, a poster up in the gym, again there's groups of people who don't go to the gym. And um, midday in town centres, well it might be on a school day or it might be that you are skewing your um, data towards uh, retired people. There's, there's lots of reasons why uh, a certain group of people won't be at a town centre at midday. The only one here that gives everyone an equal chance of being picked is this one here. Okay, so picking people randomly from the electoral roll. There are some groups of people who might choose not to be on the electoral roll, but looking at the four methods, um, this one is by far um, the most fair sample. I'm just going to write the question out a bit bigger, just so we've got more room. And loads of different methods of expanding brackets. I'm going to do smiles and rainbows. So we just draw a smile rainbow. And I put a little line there to remind me to times it. So we do 5 times 7, which is 35. And it's 7x, so it's going to be 35x. And 5 times 4, which is 20. So our answer is 35x plus 20. 
So when you read this question, the question's basically asking you to find the bearing of O from B. So the lifeboat is at B, so I'm going to draw a north line here. And to find a bearing, you start from the north line and you keep going um, clockwise. So we're going to look for this angle here. Now, this angle, which is given to us in the question, and this angle here, which I'm just going to call x, are going to be equal. So x is going to equal 135 degrees. And the reason for that is we've basically got, and I'm just going to draw a, or extend the north line down, because we've basically got a, uh, well, we have a set of parallel lines here, and we have a set of z angles, which we know is alternate angles. So the reason for that is it's alternate angles. And always show the reasons to the examiner. Okay, and so to find out what the bearing is, so the bearing um, of O from B, it's just going to be 360 take away 135. And the reason for that is angles on a point We've run out of space. Okay, so we're going to do 360, take away 135, which is 225. And so our answer is 225. To find out what the value of x is, we first of all have to find out what the value of y is. And we can notice that we've got two sets of parallel lines here and here, and a line going through them. And we kind of got these F angles, which we have to call corresponding angles. So we know that 2y minus 50 is equal to 78. And we must write down the reason. So corresponding, corresponding angles. Um, and corresponding angles are equal. Now here we've got um, an equation and we want to solve it. So we get our lines in. We go first of all. Um, add 50 to both sides. So we've got 2y equals uh, 78 plus 50, which would be 128. And then we're going to halve both sides, or we'll divide by 2. So we've got 64. So we know that y is 64. And so we look back at the um, diagram to find out how we'd work out x. Well, what we can do, there's a few different things we can do. Um, we could work out the fact that these two here are vertically opposite. That would be absolutely fine. But actually, if we look at this um, part here and this part here, these are also two parallel lines. And we've got this um, angle here and this angle are going to be alternate. So... I can write that down here. So angle ECB is equal to 78 degrees. So this will be 78 degrees. And the reason for that is alternate angles. And then finally, if we know this is 78 and we know that this is 64, because we know what Y is, then we can work out what X is. So X equals... 180 angles in a triangle, take away the 78 we know and the 64 we know. And the reason for that is angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. And just make sure you write down all the reasons as you go. And when we take away the 78 and the 64 from 180, you get 38. So X is therefore 38 degrees. To find solutions for quadratics on a graph, all you need to do is find out where the graph meets the x-axis. Okay, So the coordinates this graph meets the x-axis are here and here, and that will be minus 0 0.8 and, minus, uh, and 0 0.2. And they're also called roots. So we're going to start by doing a multiplication grid. And we're multiplying the x minus 11 
So x and minus 11 by the x minus 3. So x and then minus 3. So x times x is x squared. x times minus 11 is minus 11x. x times minus 3 is minus 3x. And minus 3 times minus 11 is positive 33 because 2 minuses make a plus. Put the terms together. And you'll notice here that we can simplify. So we've got two x terms. We can collect the x terms. And that will give us x squared minus 14x plus 33. So our answer is x squared minus 14x plus 33. To answer this question, we need to know what an equation, expression, formula, and identity is. So the formula is basically um, an equation but for real world things so area equals pi r squared it's where the letters actually mean something expression is um, just algebra without the equal sign so 5x plus 3 would be an expression an equation um, has an equals and it can be solved so you can find out what x is or find out what a is and an identity is true for all values of that letter so um, an, ex an example would be x times x equals x squared that's an identity because that's true for all values of x so looking here on the right hand side we've got 3x plus 2x but if we imagine x is 10 so 3x would be 30 plus 2x would be 20 30 plus 20 well that will equal 5x 5 times 10 and actually this is true for all values of x and the reason it's true for all values of x is we know that 3x plus 2x, this right-hand side here, equals 5x. They're the same thing. Now, normally with an identity, it's shown with three lines. Now, in the exam, this type of question, it won't be shown with three lines because that kind of gives it away um, that it's an identity. But this um, question is definitely an identity. And you can't solve it because it's true for all values of x. So yes, x could be 10, x could be a million, x could be a third, x could be anything. The first thing to notice is that the tree must be closer to CD than AB. So if we draw a line across the middle, it can't be um, in the top bit because that would be closer to line AB. The second piece of information that is given to us is it must be at least 11 metres away from point C. So we get our compass out and measure 11 centimetres, or whatever the scale we're using in this diagram is. And we draw a quarter circle from C. And it says shade the region that it can be planted. So this is the region that represents closer to line CD than AB but also not within 11 meters of point C. To be able to work out this question we need to work out the amount of student hours required to paint the wall and to work that out we've got six students and it takes them 11 hours so six times 11 means it's going to take 66 student hours so if we had one student, it would take 66 hours. Two students would be half of that because they share the work and etc. etc. So here we've got six students and it take 11 hours. And it says how long would it take seven um, students? Well, if they're 66 hours or student hours, but they're sharing the time, we just divide 66 by 7. So 66 divided by 7 is 9.428. Blah blah blah. And it says it wants it to two decimal places, so it will take them 9.43 hours. Now, check this makes sense. We've got six students and it takes them 11 hours. So, we'd think if we had more students helping to paint the wall, it would take less hours. So, we've gone from 11 hours to about nine and a half. So, that sounds right. So, this question is a simultaneous equations question. And so we're going to have to write down some equations. So it says two apples and three pears cost £3.80. So two apples, I'm going to call it A, A for the price of an apple, 
plus three pairs, so three P, cost three pound 80. Now I'm gonna do this as 380 just because it's easier to work with integers rather than decimals. And it says three apples, so three A plus eight pairs, cost seven pound 80, or 780 pence. Okay, so the first thing I do is try and get these numbers the same. So 3 and 8, um, they both go into 24. So I need to make them both 24. And what some people do is they just label this A and this B. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply everything in equation A by 8 so that this becomes 24. So it's going to become 8A. And so we go times the 2A by 8, which will be 16A plus 24P. And 380 times 8 is 3040. And we're going to do the same with B, but this time we're going to times it by 3. So we're going to have 3B. And we're just going through everything here and we're timesing it by 3. So 9A plus 24P, which is good. That's what we wanted. And 780 times 3 is 2340. So now we've got both of these the same coefficient what we can do is we can eliminate going downwards. Now, if they are the same, the S in same is the S in subtract. If they were different signs, so if these weren't both positive, if one of them was negative, different, the D in different is the D in add. So here they are the same, so we are going to subtract, and we're going to subtract going downwards. So we're going to start off by doing, and I can just do a little line here to show what we're doing. So we're subtracting going downwards, and we're going to do 16a take away 9a, which will be 7a. 24p take away 24p, which is nothing, which is why we did that, is to eliminate them. And then 3040 take away 2340 will be 700. Then I can put my lines in. And all I need to do now is just divide both sides by 7. And I get A equals 100. So we know that apples cost 100, or one pound. We need to work out what pairs cost. So I just need to pick one of the equations. I'm just going to pick this top one here. And I'm going to write out, instead of A, we know that A is a pound, or 100 pence. So plus 3P equals 380. So that's going to be 200 plus 3P is 380 and then again I'm just going to draw my lines down and we're going to subtract 200 from both sides so it's going to be 3p equals 180 and then we're going to just divide by 3 both sides and we've got p equals 60 so a pair costs 60 now we can check this by using the other equation there so 3 times 100 is 300, plus 8 lots of 60 is going to be, what's that, 480? So that's going to be 780, so we know that we've got it right. We It doesn't look like it, but we actually have a quadratic here. And the reason it doesn't look like it is because we don't have an x term. But as long as we have an x squared term and a number term, we definitely have a quadratic. And notice something about this second number. It's a negative version of a square number and that will always be the case because this question is using something called difference of two squares. It's very very simple to work out. What you do is you put down two sets of brackets and you square root the first term, well that's just going to be x, and you put the positive and negative versions of the square root. So we're going to square root 121 which is 11, so we're going to put plus 11 and minus 11 and that's it. Now, when we expand that, and we'll just go quickly expand that now to have a look, it's going to be x squared plus 11x minus 11x minus 121. And notice that the two x terms cancel each other out, which is why we don't have the x terms. First thing we notice is that there is a square here, so we can work out what this length is going to be. It's also going to be 40 centimetres. And whenever we're working out the um, area of a shaded area, we're normally working out the area of two shapes and subtracting one from the other. 
And this question's really no different. Um, so we're going to start off working out the um, area of the square. And all we need to do now for that is 40 times 40, uh, which will be 1,600 uh, centimetres squared. I normally only put units in our answer. The next thing we're going to do is work out the area of the circle. But to do that, we need to work out um, what the diameter of the circle is. And if you notice that the diameter of the circle is just 40 degrees, it's the same as the width of the square or height of the square. So uh, if the diameter is 40 degrees, the radius would be 20 degrees. So for the circle, for the area of the circle, we're going to do pi times the radius, which is 20 squared. And 20 squared would be 400. So this will be 400 pi. This question's asking us to leave it in terms of pi. So we're going to do that. Now, next we're going to work out the... Um, all of the corners so that includes these three here and this one uh, so i'll say like i don't know four corners just try and explain to the person marking my exam what i'm doing and to do that we're just going to do the square take away the circle so 1600 take away 400 pi now we can't actually um, do anything more than that that is our answer um, so it's just we just leave it at that and to work out just the shaded bit which is this bit here they are four equal amounts that we've got for these corners so just one corner which is the shaded bit will be the four corners divided by four now we've got a kind of fraction here, we can divide all of the terms by 4, so that will leave 1 at the bottom, one, 100 pi here, and this will be 1600 divided by 4 is 400. So we're just cancelling the fraction, and actually we leave it as 400 minus 100 pi, and that indeed is our answer. You can't simplify that any further. In this question we have a right angle triangle and we know two of the sides and we're looking for the third one. So that screams to me Pythagoras. So Pythagoras is a squared plus b squared equals c squared with c squared being the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the one opposite the right angle so this is going to be c. And we'll labour the other ones a and b, it doesn't matter which way around they go. So a is uh, 5, so it'd be 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144. And so 25 plus 144 is 169. Now that's c squared, so we need to solve here. And the way to solve is just to square root both sides. And so it would be 13 equals C. Because it's distance, we don't worry about the negative 13, so just the positive 13. So we know C is 13. Uh, so we need to know what the total um, the total length around the um, triangle is. So we're going to add the 5, the 12, and the 13 we've just found. When you do that, you get 30. So we know there's 30 metres in total. Now it does say that we need 90 millilitres of paint per metre of wood. So the amount of paint needed is going to be the 30, because that's the total distance, times the 90, because we need 90 for every metre of paint. 3 times 9 is 27, and then put the two zeros at the end. So the answer is 2,700 millilitres. So the thing we know about triangles is their angles add up to 180. So what we can do is we can say w squared plus 84 plus w plus 3w equals 180. And let's just put that together. So it's w squared plus 4w plus 84 equals 180. Now, with quadratics, whenever we're looking to solve, we want... Um, to have it equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to take away the 180 from both sides, so it equals zero. So we've got the w squared plus the 4w, 
um, but we want to take away the 180 from it which will give us minus 96 equals 0. So with quadratics when we're trying to solve them we need to put them into brackets and to do that we need two numbers that add together to make the 4 here and multiply together to make uh, the 96 here. So just going through different numbers for 96 and you can try different ones. The uh, first letter in the bracket would be W. The first thing in the bracket would be W. And I think it's going to be um, hmm, well it's going to be a positive and a negative to get that negative there. Uh, 96 is 12 and 8 so it would have to be um, hmm, let's have a think it would have to be a positive 12 and a negative 8 to add together to make a positive 4 and 12 times minus 8 is minus 96 that works and to solve we look at the left hand side first and get that equal to 0 so w plus 12 equals 0 and then solve it so get our lines in take away 12 both sides w equals minus 12 and we get the left hand or the right hand side get that equal to 0 w minus 8 equals 0 lines in add 8 both sides w equals 8 now we've got two answers here but it says value of w well we can't have a negative angle so we know we're looking for W to be positive, so the answer must be 8. You can complete a unique version of this paper by going to our OnMath site. OnMath is full of free content to help you prepare for your exams, such as topic-based papers, demon questions and mini-mocks. If you like what we do, please consider subscribing.